My baby looking too good, yeah she perfect, know she worth it When she pull up all them man, them flirting And yeah she know that she a dime, call up on my line Told her baby bring it one time Girl sit down and relax, girl let me put it on you, no time for chit chat <laughs> Yo what's really good though, it's your girl Yezzy Yezza And it's your girl AY, you don't know already And you are locked into another banging episode of Hey Sis of course, where we spew our opinions, when we drop some gems, we just have a good chat. It's all about banter, laughter, you know what I mean? Take what resonates with you. If you don't like it, you know what I'm already going to say. And for the ones that don't, I'm going to say it runs loud enough for the people in the back that don't hear it. Kick the fuck off. That's it. Mm-hmm. All the rocks. All the rocks and <laughs> pebbles. <laughs> Everything. And stones and <laughs> everything, everything, mountains, mountains, rivers, valleys. That's it. <laughs> that is it. Please, guys, man, you are either watching on YouTube or you are listening on Spotify. We're exclusively on Spotify, which is Hasis UK. In Amen. case you didn't know, Amen. And we are on Instagram, but we got a couple milestones. We got to let you know. Mm-hmm. We're on the road of ten thousand followers on the Instagram page. Oy, oy. Handle's gonna go somewhere here. Mm-hmm. And with that one seven thousand plus, and we want to say a big thank you because we would have never got there if it weren't for you guys. For facts, all the comments, all the likes, all the shit, the shares. I re- listen the love that we're receiving. Listen, I, I, the 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 community that we're creating and building. The people that get it, they get it. The people that don't, don't. Shout out to the people that get it because you understand that we're not out here trying to be no bullies. Nope. We ain't trying to be mean. It's just a conversation and we're chatting and it's vibes. If you're mad, you know, if the shoe fits, you know what I like to say. If the shoe fits, lace it, wear it, Cinderella, it's yours. That's it. It's yours. I think, I think a lot of people, if you're not familiar with Hey Sis, we are here having very honest conversations. Yeah, we're not. Because in the tagline, it says, we're having the conversations they told us not to talk about outside the home. Mm-hmm. So for a lot of people, it will ruffle feathers or mm-hmm. make you feel uncomfortable because you're not used to being real. Yeah. That's yeah. the fact of the matter. Yo, you're around people who are, ain't keeping it real. They're not keeping it real. So now you're bare mad because now we're saying it and you're like, ah, you're telling me what to do. I'm not. Am I your mum? You, you're actually a grown person paying bills. You don't need me to tell you yeah. what to do. You know what you need to do and what you shouldn't do. I'm just talking. We're just talking. We're having, we're having conversations. Exactly. And if you feel like you're being told what to do, that that's not our intention our intention is to have conversations whatever you take from it you take from it Mm -hmm. but it's a place where you can feel safe enough to be honest exactly and have more conversations that's all we're creating a safe space for people to have conversations because there's not enough safe spaces for people to have conversations everybody want to pretend that we're all merry and loving and then the minute someone puts something out it's like actually i hate that thing negativity and i'm like ah but I thought you liked it. I thought, it was I thought you space. was cool. I thought it was the same space. Okay, exactly. let's keep it a hundred. Let's keep it a buck. We're just That's having it. talks, man. And we are good. We are very well. We welcome differing opinions. Mm. If you got a difference in opinions, we very much welcome it. But what we won't tolerate, and we have a zero tolerance to, is abuse for yeah. our opinions. So you will be named and shamed, shamed. and added. That's it. You'll be added, named and shamed. Don't try to go in DMs and begging because people have gone into the DMs begging for things to be taken down or accused. That's so something. weird. Like, who am I? You know, tomorrow you still have to wake up you know and go to work why would you need me to, like you still have to work i'm not the reason why you have to work i'm not the reason any of this is happening yeah. that's crazy to act like as if <laughs> that's a you problem fam and we are but now... andrew take you like the video though hmm? andrew take they like the videos though Oh yeah, when it's Andrew, when it's coming from someone else, when it's coming from someone you believe deserves to have an opinion in this world, you accept it. Mm-hmm. When it comes from a figure that you feel like, no, no, you shouldn't speak up, all mm-hmm. of a sudden you're uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? It's a new year. Be prepared to be very uncomfortable with some more content coming your way. Okay. <laughs> it's the reckoning. That's it. It's the reckoning. <laughs> speaking and speaking of reckoning. The team of listen, 2024, Cat baby. Wo- I don't <laughs> care who comes after. Cat Williams has won 2024. If you don't know no, what we're talking about. Forget about it. He's rap- it up that's it just go to 2025 because he's wrapped it it up (laughs) yeah and he and he lined it up nicely nicely we got some more reckonings coming our way these are actual studies being shown so if you've got a problem talk to your mother uh today's episode of hey sis we're going to be talking about the fact that and studies have shown five percent of men admitted to washing their towel just once a year it's compared to one percent of women 
Uh, the data showed that 67% of people wash their towels due to the visual cleanliness first, and then second, followed by the smell at 61%, and the number of uses at 58%. So, men washing their towels once a year, 5% of them, let's talk about it. What do you think about that one, AY? I'm flabbergasted. Really? I'm disgusted. I'm appalled. Mm. How are you telling me that you're waiting until your your towel smells like that's when you're washing it? Yeah. So that okay. Let's break that down here. So a lot of people go off. It is this in the UK or just generally around the world? Where is it based off? Okay. So this is based off because that's wild. So this is the platform. It's the findings come in a survey for bathroom suppliers showers to you. It revealed that millions of households up and down the country, so the UK, could be risking skin infections and other health problems because of poor towel hygiene. The survey showed that 2,200 UK residents found almost one in 10 wash their towels twice a year only. 5% of men admitted to washing them just once a year compared to 1% of women. So yes, definitely the UK. And that me, 5% mad. of men, shame on you. I wonder who's dating them. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. To go off only washing your towel based on how it looks, like if this looks dirty enough, is very foul. Exactly. To wait till it smells is very foul. Yeah, because the, the, the my thing is, it can look, but if it's not smelling, you're telling me you're still thinking it's That's what we're fine. About. Like you should be changing your towel within the week. Within the week, don't say, "Oh, this smells bad." Maybe I should. You know what that reminds me <laughs> of? Two things. One, um. I saw of uh, an interview with this celebrity and he was trying to say basically he don't wash um, with a cloth. Mm. You know that interview? I don't even know if you saw well, that interview. He said that um, a washcloth is for poor people. Yeah, it's for poor people. I didn't get that. So I was thinking, okay, so you use your towel to wash yourself then. So you must, you're using your hands and then you just do rub, rub, rub. And then the towel is still the scrub. Okay. So that's what I was thinking. I just don't understand if a washcloth is for poor people, then what's for the rich? A sponge? I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. Second thing, it reminds me of New Girl. New Girl, it's that's a, a TV, TV show. show, right? Yeah. And obviously you love that show, it's funny. And oh, I can't remember their names, but there was one guy, there was two guys, there are three guys living yeah. together. Um, One of them was complaining about um the towel because it was always wet. And he's like, why the fuck? Because he's a clean freak and he's a yeah. neat guy. He's like, why the fuck is this towel always wet? He's like... This is my towel. He was trying to basically explain, like, this is my towel. And he, then the other guy was like, no, this is my towel. And he was like, what the fuck? Well, no, this is my towel. And then he was like, wait, so we've been using the same towel. And he was like, do you even wash the towel? He said, why would I wash the towel? The towel washes, cleans me. <laughs> what, what, he thought the towel was self-cleaning. This is the problem. And he felt so sick. I cannot remember the name to save my life, but I know, like, guys, if you know, please yeah. mention it in the comments because literally I could not... Schmitz, Schmitz, that's his name, yeah. Schmitz, yeah. yeah. Like Schmitz was yeah, the, the one that, yeah, that was... Yeah, no, no, yeah. Schmitz was the is the one that um the ladies' man, the Jewish guy, the one that... um he needs the, clean, the clean. No, he's the clean one. The airhead was... I cannot remember his name, but really, oh, he was yeah. the other guy. I can't remember his name. Schmitz is yeah, Schmitz is famous. He's the one that was the clean guy, the one that was vexed about the towel being used by somebody okay, else okay. because there was another towel that was nobody was using and it it was fresh and he was vexed. He was like, "Are you telling me you've been using my towel this whole entire time and you haven't been washing mm. it? That's why it's been wet and it's been hanging there." And I'm like, "This is the thing." Some people, that's what they think. They think that the towel just self cleans. I don't know. I got. I feel a lot of people. Yeah. If you're not living alone, you have no excuse to be dirty because somebody's got to tell you, bro, it's a new month. You need a new toothbrush because there's people out here. They're not changing their toothbrushes every month. No, I don't understand. I think mm. my thing is like, it's how I here and I'm very picky with come, when it comes to bathrooms, bathrooms and kitchens specifically as well. Yeah. I'm very, very picky because to me, your kitchen is where you cook. So if it's not nice and clean, your food, food is, infest, is infested with food bacteria. poisoning is a real thing okay mm. dirty shit and then for me the bathroom if it's not nice and clean and the things that you use are not nice and clean then what have you you are just continuously basking in the dirt 
Mm. How do you go in the bathroom? Scrub. Then you put in on that towel that's been there for however long. If you can't be bothered to clean, because some people aren't cleaners. You know how you go on TikTok and people are like, oh, come with me to clean my dinner. Mm, 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 some mm, people, mm, they're mm. just not like that. Have the money to hire a cleaner. Yeah. Please, because you not wanting to be clean will lead to infections. Some infections you will pass on to other people. Yeah. Be considerate, please. This thing, it's like when you go into people's bathrooms and you're looking at it and you're thinking, you know, I'm going to hold my piss. Oh, like I'm that. Gonna hold my... Bro, I've been to bathrooms before that I'm just like... How do you even go here to clean? You can't clean yourself in here. You actually catch things from here. It's true. Because you know, like, when you're out and about here in the city, you know how they still have public toilets? I can't enter them. It depends on the place where I'm going. And it depends on how desperate I am. Because if it's like, oh, shit, I've had one too many drinks. And you know when you've broken the seal, but you haven't gone past the point where the seal's been broken, you've let out the amount of yeah time so now you're in a good holding space yeah yeah so you're like you're in that space where you've broken the seal so you're like every 20 minutes in a, and you're traveling from one place to another and i'm mm. like because i've been in a position where i'm like yo you know those scummy ones oh no the scummy ones I would in rather, the city those scummy dingy i ain't gonna ones. lie to you i would rather just go out into the park <laughs> With my Facts. tissue in my bag. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> because I can't go into a, a toilet where I'm like, I might catch something just from holding the handle of the That's door. That's what I'm saying. And then the tight ones, yeah, where you try to come out and then you've brushed up against the wall and you're like, oh. Or, 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 or you are already enter it and you're like, because mm. it smells. Yeah, if it, it smells, smells already. Sp- and you're like, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I can't even enter without. You're having to hold your breath or do this. You so, know what I mean? Hold putting your 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 jacket or your top on your nose because you can't physically breathe mm-hmm. that air. You know the toilets that are lethal, the ones that you get in certain stations. Mm-hmm. There's certain stations, their toilets. I mm-hmm. rather hold it till I get home. Yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah, because I don't know if it's the cleaning products they use or the people using it. Yeah, mad. It's disgusting. It's dis. Disgusting. You're literally gonna be. You're, you're literally feeling like I'm gonna die in here. You have to hold it. They need those I'm toilets that you pay. I'm gonna die in here. No, it's true. But that's why I'm like, if you're gonna have public toilets, we might need the ones that you pay a proper price for. Yeah. Because I rather them, yeah, we pay a price and it's been looked after and there's a standard. Yeah, I rather. I'm gonna lie to you. I rather. I rather do that because yeah. at least I know when I'm entering there, I'm not dying from the fumes or before I even go and piss. Because some in Europe you have to pay for, isn't it? Like a euro or two. Is it? Yeah, there's some that you pay like a euro or two and you're like, I've paid, but I know what I expect when I get in there. Do you know what that makes me think of? Um, Carnival. And that is one of the reasons why I've never been. Because when I see the port loose and I'm thinking how long that day is and how many people are attending Carnival, based off the toilets alone, I'd rather stay at home. You see with Carnival, if you're going to Carnival, yeah, you have to go in the mindset of one, you have to accept what you're given. Two... If you find a place, you have to be willing to pay. Do you get it? Like, mm. my, my sisters and I, we've been blessed to find places where the people that live there will get port parties. But they are cleaning that. Like, these people, it was three quid. And I was thinking, damn! But yeah. before you even enter, they go and check to see if it's clean. They will okay. wipe. They will, they'll be like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I'll pay it. Because when I enter in, it's clean, it's sorted. And I'm thinking, raw! Yeah. This is, oh my God, this is not, yeah. this is not. It's like, I'm happy to go in this toilet. And I've had that experience. But let me tell you something. Before I found out the first time, yeah, in when the first carnival, that, mm-hmm. not the first carnival, the second carnival that um, went by after mm-hmm. the, after when it was lock off in 20, from 2020. Yeah. The first one that came back, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a big one, yeah. Bro. So before we found the party party over this house, this it was a f- um, husband and a wife and they were all, Point. they gave you sanitizers to wash your hand like they were making sure your are okay as was the toilet was okay i said you mm. said you can have my money where's the location let's pin it because we're coming back because this is the place we need to go yeah okay but um literally before we found it so the carnival is itself they provide toilets which i've seen those portal mm. yes yeah before we found the toilets here yeah. and imagine it's daylight I'm thinking okay i can't walk any further trying to find a side road that there's no one there for me to go and piss yeah. with my sanitizer, with my my tissue mm-hmm. on the side because I somebody will see me and I will end up on shade bar. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. And there were a couple of people that got caught on This that. is it. Mm-hmm. So I said, I'm going to have to firm these toilets. 
when I tell you the toilet smells so bad from the outside, oh, as in there was a distance and I smelt it, I almost threw up. And I'm not easy to throw up in a, like, from smell, but I almost physically threw up. I literally had to, you know, when you wrap things around you, sprayed it with perfume because I always carry, you know me, I always have yeah, like, yeah, a little yeah. perfume thing on my hand, but my bag as well. Spray, spray, spray. Got the hand sanitizer there. You got your your tissue there, and you're thinking, okay, cool, tissue. Boom, open this door. Your child, everything is being done so quick, but because it's summertime, it's easier because you got battery riders or you got something like short, something yeah, easier yeah. for you to oh, just you slip down. <laughs> exactly, so it's easier for you to slip off. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. But when I tell you, you're standing at the door and you're like. Just go, just go. As long as you go, wipe, and you're out. Because you, you've got your sanitizer in your hand. You've yeah. got your tissue in your hand. You're set good. Yeah. Do you get it? So you're fine. You can do with the rest later. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? But why, why, why? I almost threw up. Because I, I was dying it. for breath. And I, I was like, and you know, you just kind of quickly. Mm. And I was like, mm. I was so, uh, that was the quickest I've ever caught in a toilet. Pissed wiped myself and gone out Damn. and ever since then i said i don't care if we have to pay nando's restaurant yeah. whatever you're getting my buck my penny yeah. we redrew money the next year we had coins ready because i said you're getting my money yeah. i'm going to a decent toilet because i almost died yes we found that lady but we don't know if we don't remember the house and the place and ever mm. so we can't go back there we did find somewhere else with these these guys actually these two boys um own this um, property as well and they were keeping yeah. it clean and as, and everything um and i was like calm cool we will find it but i i literally even before that we went to it was like a, is it nando's i think it was a nando's and yeah. they were also charging for the pingy but okay. if somebody was there they were always cleaning up making sure it's clean because obviously people were also sitting down eating so they had to make sure the toilets yeah. were like enough for good for people were eating as well for the carny or whatever but I'm it was a day to eat <laughs> not kind of all honestly truly not kind of all. come on but um yeah no i didn't care i was like i'm gonna pay whoever i need to pay take my money i need to find a proper toilet because i will die if i have to go to the public toilets that they offer because i don't understand why they smell that bad i guess maybe because it's not being cleaned like flushed regulated like removing yeah, everything that's, that's exactly it. yeah and i i and the fact that men and women both go in it People be out here shitting in these places. Bro. That's it. How the fuck are you shitting in a public toilet like that? But my thing is this: that's those are the two things that's put me off. It's the sanitary aspect of the toilets for carnival, yeah, and it's the fact of the travel because carnival's been going on for so long that surely they should have had the logistics down packed by now. Like of the, the carnival, the, of the travel, the logistics of carnival need to be a lot better. What From do you mean? Going to toilet, they should have some type of infrastructure that they know it's in the same area every year. Yeah, yeah. Like, do something that makes sense. The portaloos, come on. To this, but point. they're not. I guess there's like the people that would hire to clean the portaloos are turning up, shaking ass. They ain't trying to work. Well, they need to hire somebody and pay them enough to want to do. Yeah, that. they need to pay people enough to be like, I would. I don't mind missing if I'm um, this day because because it's two on two days. So if they, either they miss one day or yeah. the other, they be like, ah, I don't mind missing this day because I'm getting paid enough that I'm like, whoa, it's like it's, you're getting paid at least. 20 what? an hour. 20, that's what I was going to say. Lot, anyone would do it for 20 pounds an, an hour. hour at least. And people are like, okay, fuck it. For, for that long time? Cool, I'll do that. That's a good buck. People people miss out on Christmas Day for paying a half. Mm -hmm. So time mm -hmm. and a half. So mm -hmm. 20 pounds an hour. A lot of people sort that out. And the travel, I feel like still being crammed up, God knows, 30, 40 years. I guess it's because on. it's, you're trying to make sure that condensed amount of people going everywhere and anywhere. And it's, it causes more problems for other people who are mm. just generally traveling that day as well. Yeah. So you're trying to make sure that we limit you causing congestion to the whole of London and just at least you're just con doing congestion to this area. Boy. Me personally, travel to to Carnival has never been an issue. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, because no. of where we live as well. So it's easy access to us. Yeah. It's quite quick. Um, Coming back, again, I guess it also it's like, it's basically you're just trying to limit 
where everything is so at least you have enough people of i guess police force here police mm-hmm. force there because the things that happen on the way to go on the underground is actually hilarious it's a hot box of a day because it's like even going back to the whole towel situation it's like Saying that only 5% of men wash their towel once a year, if any of these men are living with somebody, how the hell was that running? Mm-hmm. Because I can't be sharing a space with a man and you're not washing your towel regularly. We would have a whole cupboard full of fresh towels so you can change it daily if you want to. Right. Because and then you go to carnival and they come back. <laughs> and you go to carnival. Sure, because it's like certain people, it's like you wouldn't stay in a hotel if they weren't changing your sheets and your towels every day. So why the hell is it when you're at home, you're living like that? Exactly. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Towels aren't that spenny, you know. Towels aren't spenny. Even a good cotton towel... And it's just like some people's standards at home is kind of mad because that means yeah. I would never have a cup of tea at your yard. No, no, this is when you know when your parents tell you, you don't just be going to people's you, houses. You understand yeah. why they were mm, being very smart fam. and careful about it. When because you get older, hmm? you realize that you can't be just eating food by from anyone because no. some people, when you see how they live and you see how unclean they yep. are, yep. why would you not want to share bread with them? Because you don't know where those hands have been. Mm-hmm. You don't know if they've been coughing all over your food. Certain people with pets as well, because I feel like as a kid, yeah. What? And pets yeah. is the worst, because pets they'll the be worst. letting their pets go on the kitchen counter, yep. and the this, on the that, licking the food. I'm thinking, excuse me, the same spoon that your pet has licked, you want to now use to stir the soup. That's what I'm saying, because if you ever seen the episode of Come Down With Me, yeah, and you yeah. see how people will be letting their cats just jump on you like, okay i saw one i remember one was like with a snake that went on the table and they're eating and the snake shat on the table i'm like this oh, is yes, inappropriate it's very inappropriate and it's like okay so as a kid yeah when that's why i hate snakes Ew. yeah that's another reason i've held i've held one in the past same year. i was drunk there was a carnival it and was, I, it was school and they had all the people there i was like okay this must uh, be safe it was a little mad. demo but it's like when you're a kid yeah and your parents tell you, you know that speech you get just before you go into the yard. Yeah. yeah. And they say, don't eat nothing, don't accept nothing. If they offer you something, don't yeah. take it. Yeah. As a kid, I'm thinking this is very egotistical. Maybe you and you lot have this extra beef or whatever you got between you. Then when you grow older, you realize, oh, you're protecting me because really not everybody's house you should eat and drink from. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, because mm-hmm, when I see mm-hmm, the standard mm-hmm, of people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and sometimes mm-hmm. people with the, the houses ain't where they need to be then when they go outside they have chest to be making demands like this is my standard but i've seen how you live and your house is dirty that's why i don't understand it's like you've got all these standards apply them to yourself first because your house mm. does not make sense mm. you are busy asking other people but look out the way you live mm. apply the standard to yourself it's begin it begins it starts from you the don't home. they always they say don't they always say that it starts from home it starts from you yeah you are it, it begins with you you are the one that sets the pace you are the one that sets the standard you're the one that 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 um sets the you know what I mean? you're the one yeah, you're yeah. the one that leads this thing if i'm looking at you mm. and i'm seeing how you live and i'm thinking this is disgusting why the hell would I care what else comes out of your mouth about, about you telling me about myself? Now, if you were humble, no one would think that way. But it's because some some people are so cocky about their standards outside mm-hmm. that when people see how you live and your mattress is on the floor, that's why people have to go, oh, mattress. You're even lucky they have mattress. They are coming to do air mattress. They're even coming mm. to do, what's it called? That's that, 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 um, that, um, uh, the bed sheet thing what's it called the one that you use for camping that mattress thing that you use for camping no even mattress oh yeah yeah yeah. i get what you mean um uh, the floor it's on the floor yeah it's on yeah, the floor yeah, yeah, you're yeah. coming to do that's what you're, you, you're sleeping on we, we but when you're stepping here. outside you're saying i want a woman like i want a man like that's what i'm saying but your your you know your back is hurting that's what I'm saying. because you have nowhere good to sleep on in your house You've got backache, you've got neck ache, mm. but because you have nowhere to sleep in your house, that's proper, in your house, but yet you want to come outside and tell me that I should be flying you out, mm. I should be cooking, cleaning, there's nothing clean in your house, mm. this makes sense why you be asking this, because you look at where you live, but that's what I'm saying, make <laughs> all the demands you want in your life. Just make sure the demands you're asking for tally up with the life you live that you can provide for yourself. Facts. Because when you make a demand, make sure that who you're demanding from is an option. Yeah. And not your only choice. Yeah. Because you can't be doing too much demanding when that's your only choice. Yeah. 
bruh, mm. please don't let this. See, I saw this thing, and quite a lot of men have been saying this actually, which I quite love because you agree. Um, that they're saying that a lot of men they be thinking that they're part of the one percent that are making the money, so they be they be thinking like as if I want this. I have these demands. Mm-hmm. I expect this. Oh, they fear for this and that. Like you're the one percent. You're not. Mm. You're not. So stop thinking like as if because fifty cent has rich baby. You're not fifty. Ooh. You don't have fifty. You don't have ten. Ooh. So stick to where you are. Mm. Listen to follow the people that are in your level. Let's be humble this year. Let's be humble. Mm. Even women. Yeah. You're out here saying, oh, broke men this, broke men that, broke men other, broke here, broke that, broke that. You stole that wig on a fight that you had with a girl. (laughs) You and your friends dumped her. That wig is stolen. Then you went to go and install next day. The wig is borrowed. It's borrowed. (laughs) It's a borrowed wig. (laughs) (laughs) And you want to ask, broke, broke, broke men this. The wig nah. is borrowed. Because we have we have to break it down. And we were talking yeah. about this off camera as yeah. well. It's not necessarily the aspect of being broke, but stingy. It's the stingy. And there's a difference between a broke man and a stingy man. Listen, listen, listen. This is what, 2024. Mm-hmm. I need people to understand. Yeah. I think what a lot of um, women meant to say was about stingy men. Yeah. Some men broke. And I mean, that's... Let yeah. them talk for themselves. But a lot of women, I think what we meant to speak, speak on is about stinginess. Mm-hmm. Stingy men, stingy women okay. are an infection to society. <laughs> they are a disease that needs to be eradic- eradicated. Yeah. Because the stinginess is the problem. It's not about you having 500 bags in your pocket just right now, just easy to throw out of the way. Yeah. It's about the fact that you know what you've got but you're not moving tight to even buy me tampons. Hey, hold on a minute. <laughs> what's going on? What's going on here? So what's that here? Yeah. Uh, we're giving them content. We're giving mm. them laughters, little mm. giggles, a mm, bit mm, of real mm, life. Mm, 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 mm. But then you're sat there and you ain't watching. Raw. Yeah. As in to watch, to like, Imagine. subscribe. Imagine. Or comment. That's That's really rude, you know. Maybe I'm being too fast. Maybe we're being too fast. Okay, I'm gonna. We, we'll give you some time. There you go. Here's some time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You think it's enough time? Yeah, I think it's enough time. Yeah. Okay. Let's get back to the episode. Okay. It's the stinginess that's the problem, right? So, it's not exactly as it's. It's me saying, "Yeah, babe, I I'm at work. I've got a couple of tampons. I've got a couple of pads." Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even got time um, to go to the shops right now, but could you just get me um, some um, if he's working at home or on your way home? Because yeah. I'll, by the time I get home, blah, 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 you go and get, now the guy goes and gets it. Mm-hmm. I come home, now you're telling me it's four pounds. My friend, oh. run me that four pounds. That, that's the stinginess. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Because we're not saying, yeah, people. some people say four pounds is a big deal. You're stingy. Yeah. If you're going to say to me, four pounds a big deal, you're stingy. Because if you need to put a tally on how much you're spending on your friend or your partners for the little mm. things, then I know that the big things ain't never going to come. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I will do that for my friend. As a stand... Basic, if you say to me, yo, can you get me this? Can you get me that? Yeah, of course. I, I got the, the, It doesn't matter. Like, even if I'm like, oh, okay, cool. It's not, it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. It's not a big deal because it's like... Yeah, you're my friend. I'm going to get that for you. I'm not going to tell you, oh, yeah, but when you know, that was five pounds. And, yeah. and I'm not talking about the people who are struggling and you're, you're literally living by 10 pounds a month. Yeah. So don't come in the comments telling me about no 10 pounds a month. Oh, you know, some people are struggling, are struggling, are struggling. So it's not you. 10 pounds a month. Because if you've got an iPhone, maybe you should get a phone that's less, less prioritized. Because if it's really that t- t- sticky, we have to prioritize what's more important. It's true. Do you know what I mean? Because I would do that. I don't need to. I would sacrifice what I need to sacrifice for me to be able to be okay and be happy and not really be crying about certain things. Even though I know, yes, it's not my fault half of the time. It's the government. But I'm still going to do what I need to do. But 
when I'm saying what we're talking about, we're talking about stingy people, people that you run them to they they, they, buy, they spend two pounds on you and expect you to run that two pounds back. Mm-hmm. That's disgusting. Be ashamed of yourself, especially if you're friends or family or partner. If you've got a relationship with that person, it's disgusting. Like I know someone that I didn't even know them for that long, mm-hmm. but she's a sweetheart. She's an absolute sweetheart where I work. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. Low key want to treat her. I'm trying to figure out what the best way to do it because mm-hmm. I know, like, I'm trying to. You know, when you're trying to figure out the things that they like and stuff, mm-hmm. so you can treat them because she's a sweetheart. My girl knew that I needed. I uh, knew that I like electrolytes. Yeah. Right for the gym, it helps, and also it just gives you a little bit of more energy before you go to the gym. Blah, blah, blah. She had gone to Korean ballots or whatever and got some. She got me one. I didn't know. I didn't ask. I never said. Do you know what I mean? She just came back. She's like, "Oh, I got you some here, by the way." You just see like that? that? Yeah. You see that? Because those are the things. That's there's the stinginess. Stingy people will say, "I got you this." It was five pounds. It will be. It was five pounds after. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you didn't do it because you wanted to do it for the goodness of your heart. You did it because you're like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm you know, run me that check, that run me that money. Yeah. I cannot stand stingy people because you know what? When you're stingy, money will go. And it will rarely fi- come. And it won't find you again. It won't find you again because you're 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 chasing it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I hate when people because you know, people don't understand if you're chasing something, if you're like, oh, I'm chasing money, I'm chasing money. What are you saying? You're saying that money's running away from you. So why would it come? And money should find you. I feel like one thing that, uh, the one thing I'm worried about in this society is that you've got a lot of young men that are like, I can't afford to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And what that tells me is that you were raised with the mindset of being a poor, basically. Let me run that back. So basically, my worry in society is that there's a lot of young men that say, oh, I genuinely can't afford to be in a relationship. And they're talking about the money side of things. And all that tells me is that you come from a household that, raised you in a poor mindset type mm-hmm. of way because if you're always having this mindset that i'm poor i'm gonna stay poor um, i've got a bit of money now but i don't want to be where i was before which was poor you're going to conserve something that you don't need to conserve and like we were talking about where all the whispers which are very loud now broke men and dating broke men it's not necessarily like you said the wording of being broke but more or less that being stingy comes from the heart yeah so being a giver also comes from the heart yeah if you haven't got a heart that gives happily you're not going to receive things happily as well you're not so all this track time, that back. yeah you're not going to track that back because essentially you're being selfish mm-hmm. and if you're already going into relationship with a selfish mindset how are you going to meet someone that mirrors what you're giving because men are supposed to set the pace and the tone for a relationship yeah so if you've already entered it in a sense of what am i getting out of this or i want to conserve as much as i want because i believe you're going to stab me in the back eventually how do you think things are really going to end for you? Exactly. Because the, the reality is that uh, no one knows. You can only assume and uh, make um, assumptions, predictions based off patterns and behaviors, right? If you're smart enough to clock things and actually put that in place, you can make those assumptions. And if you date someone and, yeah, they are used they one time when you were younger or whatever and they used you for your money, use that as an experience to be like, okay, cool. I'm not gonna I'm not going to try to avoid that situation again. Yeah. So what did I learn from that? What kind of patterns and experiences did I learn that I can now put in place that next time when I meet someone, if they're moving a certain way, if they seem a certain way, it's giving that same vibe. Yeah. Then okay, cool you're moving that way yeah. because there's people out here like when, again when you're moving all stinging oh yeah because this happened to me so i'm not gonna no, no, on everybody's trying to da, 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 yeah. da, da, da. not everyone is trying to do that there's plenty of women that the amount of stories i've heard that women are buying cars and houses for man i just can't like literally it's wild the amount of money that women would spend on a man that they like let alone love infatuated bamboozled with and you're telling me because you had this experience Mm -hmm. that all of a sudden not all women are just after you with your money that's not true it's you because you see when you're stingy with other people yeah most time or not more time than not you're stingy with yourself Oh, 100 percent and it shows it will reflect on you because exactly a lot of people grow up thinking well you know my dad did it and everything's fine my mom's still there your dad went 50 50 with your mom 
You didn't ask your mum how she felt no, about that. No, you didn't. You didn't. Go and ask your dad the real reason why he had to get a side chick. The real reason is because your mum stopped sleeping. Your mum stopped sleeping with your dad because <laughs> she no longer felt feminine enough no. in the relationship. Because no. your mum had to assume the role mm-hmm. as being masculine because mm-hmm. your so-called masculine dad had her going 50-50 in every element of their relationship. Yep. And the same woman that he's using as a side chick, she's sick of him as well. Exactly. But you don't know that because you've just grown up thinking... Well, my parents' marriage worked mm-hmm. and they went 50-50. Mm-hmm. You need to look at what the definition of a happy marriage is. Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of men are moving to married women saying, oh, you're married. Are you happily married though? Because mm-hmm. there's a big difference. There is a big difference. But then you also got the moms that they will go and ask those questions and they'll say, they'll be trying, because they won't say the truth because they'll be trying to groom their sons to be the very man that they don't have in your life. You don't want to tell your son the truth because you're still trying to put this man that doesn't give a damn about you, your husband, on a pedestal that he will never put you on. No. But then you'll say, I'm lying to my son to protect my husband's image. But then you're just raising another asshole. Yeah. But good luck with that, though. Yeah, exactly. Because all this protecting and all you're doing is just bringing more poison into this world. You are. You are. You're all- sipping on your own poison. Who are you protect? You say you're protecting your son, but really and truly, your mother and a wife that's just protecting the shame of your mistakes. Yes, because if you're really protecting your son, you'd educate him on the truths about life and what really it is to be a good man and how to avoid terrible people. How ways that you've learned from your experiences, but you have to have learned it from the first place. Yeah, some people haven't learned. They just no. they just stay there in their poison. Yeah. Because, you know, you hear a lot of things where um, you have mothers and fathers saying, yeah, you need to get a woman that, you know, don't let her think she can just relax. Make sure she's working hard as well. Please define what you mean by a woman working hard. I would love to know that because what you allowed in the 60s or the 80s when you came and settled in here and you're hustling, trying to make it work. I'm going to say how it is. The migrant hustle is different to someone born in that country hustle. Yeah, yeah. So you had to work hard because you came from another country. You had to work your fingers to the bone. Good on you, mum. Good on you, dad. The person who you raised here, birthed here, and they met someone else who was raised here. Yeah. That hustle's different. Yeah. So don't tell your son to have a mindset that he doesn't have to have. And now he's seeing women in a role of service me. Yeah. As opposed to how do I help us both grow? Yes. Yes, because her man didn't make help her grow. <coughs> he said work. He said, get your ass up and work. Nobody likes to work anymore. <laughs> get your lazy ass up and work. That's what he said. That's get it. your lazy ass up and work. Yeah. Whilst he was breeding the nation. And that's what I'm saying. I think And I- all the kids are still broke. <laughs> all the kids were still all sharing same shoe. Yeah. The mum is still yeah. living off of this, living off of that, because she hasn't got no money. Your dad ain't got no money. Everybody got no money. Everybody just... You're just perpetuating the same vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. And you know what? Let's free the aunties from the shackles of their egos. Yeah. Tell your children your husband's not back home working. He just <laughs> didn't want to come here and work and pay bills in England. Yeah. Because you got the same kids coming to school. When they say, where's your dad? Oh, my dad's back home. He's working. He's a businessman. Stop lying. Yeah. Ain't your no dad, business. The only business he's got mm, is in the Ponani. That's it. Your dad just <laughs> didn't want to come and work. He didn't yeah. want to raise you. He didn't want to pay bills. No. And your mom is still sending him money back home. This is it. And the thing is, it's like, people don't understand. It's like, it. you... When you're mad at women, or you're mad at men for these things... Mm. You have to understand that both parties play in it. So if you're mad at women uh, in this situation as a guy, mm-hmm. you have to understand you're you're mad. You're also mad at your dad. You just don't realize it because your dad did not play the role that he was supposed to play. Mm. So now you're seeking online and men on the streets that aren't even the greatest representation of how to be a real man, and also online how they're not the best representation of how to be a real man teaching you how to be so-called be a man yeah do you know what i mean and when it's not paying when it's not coming to, into fruition because it's a con and you bought into it you get mad yeah it's the same way it's like with women because you also get women that perpetuate the same patriarchy patriarchy bullshit that happens to you yeah 
because they be feeding that shit into it and you're just thinking, bro, you are part of the motherfucking problem, bro. Like, I can't stand it because you are also out here saying that, I mean, I want no soft man. I mean, I want, I want a man to do this and I want yeah. a man to do that and I want a man to do this. And it's like, but you're also the problem. Yeah, I think I think one of the main problems is that too many family setups and units are comfortable with money being an excuse to a father or a husband not being present in the home. Yeah. And that's why he's got time on Friday and Thursday night to go to the pub and meet the new woman he's gonna leave you yeah. for. Because you gave him the allowance of not being present. Yeah. Oh, it's fine, babe. You've paid for this and you paid for that. So you don't have to come to the school play. Or yeah. You don't have to come to sports and day. You, know, you have to be present. Yeah, you've got money and you're doing your part on a financial part when it comes to the family but you have to show up because children respond to imagery a child doesn't know how much their school fees are for the year but they know every time you came to their school play and the school trip and how many times you picked them up from school visual facts because you see those those little milestones to them Mm -hmm. is part of their growing the growth yeah right so it's part of their development when it comes to um fear when it comes to confidence when it comes to love when it comes to appreciation, it comes to all these different things that yeah. adds to their foundation when they go up and they go out in the world and they're starting to meet different people. They or even going to the workforce. Yeah. Do you understand? Um, pursue their careers, all these kind of things. Those are the foundations. The difference it makes for a man, a father or a mother or both showing up to a kid's recital that you're thinking, this ain't shit. But that child, it makes a big deal because yeah. to them, you're saying to them, I care. Yeah, they don't know I'm how here much, for yeah. you. And for you, you're thinking, I'm just here. It yeah. doesn't matter. I'm even tired. I'm, I, do you know what I mean? But yeah. that child is saying, I'm, I, you've got someone that cares for you and that this is a representation of someone that gives a hurt about you. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Those little things make a difference. The amount of videos I see on TikTok, oh my God, they make me want to cry. Yeah. And it's so cute when when the kids are in the on the... um. On the st- on the stage, and they're looking for the parents, and the parents are filming, and then they and they look sad, and then they finally see the parent, and they glow, yeah. and they're smiling, and it's like that matters to them because it might not matter to you f- for you now because yeah. you're at different stage, but you know when you were a child and you were doing those things, that was a big fucking deal, and sense. that made a difference. And people don't understand is that your childhood. The, f- the foundations that are laid will make a difference into the way you move and interact when you're an adult. Facts. And representation is so important because I feel like when you meet someone that hasn't got the same background as yourself or they just weren't raised in a certain way, things like PDA, public displays of affection. Mm. So I grew up here. I didn't really see my parents do PDA a lot. The hugging, the kissing. I don't know if it's based on the Christian background of things or coming from Africa. So when you're in a relationship with someone that does do PDA, for them, it's a bit like, oh, you're a bit rigid. And it's not like, oh, one wants to be this way. It's just that I haven't seen this as something Mm. normal to do out. Mm. So when I see someone on the escalator and a a couple's kissing, I'm like, oh, my God. This is is mad. But it's normal to hug and kiss Kiss and and show displays of affection. But when you've not seen that growing up, you don't see that as something being normal. No, that's facts. Because this is what I was saying on to um, another podcast, live podcast that I went to. Yeah. Because they asked, um, uh, "Do you is marriage a big deal? Do you want to get married? Da, da, da. And I was like, it's not that like, it's not a big deal. If I get married, that'll be lovely with the person that I commit to and they commit to me and blah, blah, yeah. blah. I would love that. However, it's not something that I, it's my forefront main thing. Not because I don't, give a heck about it because i said as i said like i would love that at the same time i don't prioritize it because as much as i've seen happy marriages Mm. i've seen failed marriages so for me it's like it's not a priority in that sense enough it's like i'm not leaping to the idea Mm. but it doesn't mean that if i see it and it's executed that i'm not happy for it i'm like this is what i love is what i want because i'm a hopeless romantic at heart do you know what i mean but it's just that because i haven't seen it it's a bit harder for me to just be so used to being like oh yeah like this is what i'm do you know what i mean so exactly representation matters it definitely makes it makes a massive massive difference a massive difference yeah Seeing your parents there, seeing those things, it makes a difference. And that's what I loved about, like, my and kids. Okay. 
that that visual representation one thing that screams to me about my wife and kids is transparency yeah so there's a way you can still disagree and have arguments in front of your children but they don't have to be full-blown cussing matches Mm -hmm. like you can teach your kids through your relationship how to disagree with somebody Mm -hmm. amicably you can show how to be affectionate in a in a decent way Mm -hmm. you can show how to i don't know go through difficult times but it's all about being visual being proportionate to who you're in front of yeah there's some parents they don't know how to say to the kids oh can you pop out or can you go to your rooms i need to discuss with your parents a lot of parents don't know what's appropriate and what's inappropriate yeah because you're cussing out your dad and you're cussing out the, the dad or you're cussing out their mom in front of the kids saying you're this you're a bum da, da, da. so yeah. the child is visually seeing this you don't yeah. understand that especially when you're a child you're a sponge mm-hmm. a child equals sponge yeah and i need to understand that exactly yeah. so everything you do and say and act and move they are absorbing yeah. it because if you see mom cussing out dad and then mom going to the son your dad's useless or you remind me just like your of your dad he's now growing up thinking women are angry because all i've ever known is women are angry or this particular image of a woman is angry so i don't want to date this kind of woman because mm-hmm. this is what i grew up seeing mm-hmm. he doesn't know that each woman is different in their own way mm-hmm. they don't know that oh maybe it's something your dad did mm-hmm. now you got a lot of uh young men out there that don't even know why they have a type mm-hmm. or even like you've got a long a lot of and the reason and one of the reasons why they might have a type as well is because also because when the mum said oh your dad is useless they think i'm useless mm. So that, do you know what I mean? Because they're like, oh, dad's useless. I don't want to be useless. So now they're like, I don't want to be useless. And I know that someone like you says, like, dad's useless. And I look like dad. So I need to go to someone that doesn't look like dad. Do you know what I mean? Someone else that doesn't look like mom. Mm -hmm. And also doesn't think I'm useless. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Those little things affect the way you you pursue, like, relationships in the future. Because there's a lot of angry and confused men out there, Mm -hmm. young or old, that don't know why they go out of their way to date certain people. And some of them don't want to admit, you know what, my home growing up in wasn't the happiest place ever. So I'm going out of my way to be the polar opposite from the woman I date to the area that I live in, to the way I speak, the way I walk, talk. Eat, breathe. Because I see people like that look like me get arrested. Yeah, I see uh, women that look like my mother very angry. Mm-hmm. But then you still go, I don't get it though. Yeah, there's there's a reason for everything. Yeah, there is, there is, uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely, there is, and it's it's them ones. It, that's why it's important to have good male representation. Yeah, it doesn't just have to be the dad. It can be dad, uncle, granddad, but somebody's got to step up to the plate. See, when they said, "Yeah, it takes a community, a village yeah. to raise a child," because it village. does. Because see that little girl, she's seen mum take shit from dad he ain't shit auntie take shit from uncle he ain't shit grandma takes shit from granddad he ain't shit and then when she says she doesn't believe in marriage everyone's like what how oh, why how? what do you mean <laughs> oh why are you always dating bums why are you always dating dating toxic people you were nah, nah, nah. the village said eight shit men are the type of men you should go for mm. especially as well yeah you can't be that aunt that says or the mother that says don't date this type of guy and you're still dating him Please be, be, be the example. Be the example because people are really looking at the people that are giving them advice nowadays. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't give relationship advice, but then you're still comfortable in the premise of a bad relationship. Yeah. Because all your daughter's going to grow up thinking is, you know what, mum stayed in that safe space, so I should stay in a safe yeah. space as well because I don't know what's out there. And now it's social media also raising the kids because a lot of them, the parents are like, you're complaining, here you go. That's it. Play tablet kids play play i'm that's tired it. play that's it no play. one's the so race. now you've got a bunch of women and men raising your kids from online mm-hmm. and now they're, they're saying oh be like this Miss an independent don't trust no man though don't be with no man and man, men ain't shit and do you know what i mean like miss yeah. independent listen i saw a video yeah, yeah. <laughs> speaking of- and just to touch on that as well yeah you're the same people that give your kids tablets because you can't be bothered to raise them. And then you're going to be angry saying there's no good role models out here. But you should be your child's role model. Yeah. You should be your child's goal. You should be so much of a role model that even if your child saw someone else, they'll be like, you know what? But the way my mom and dad move, they wouldn't mess with this. So yeah. now nah, I'm good. Because yeah. of the home I'm coming from. 
And look, I get that sometimes you can do the best for your child as much as you can, but if your child don't want it, your child, you know, your kids are their own people mm. as well. So they're going to do what they're going to do kind of thing. And I understand that. Uh, wait, speaking for the people that their own people, you can do the best that you can and they just decide they still want, they're still on rockersness. But there's so many others that are not on rockersness and they need you to step in and they need you to be the representation yeah. because... If you're not a representation, they're going to look for that representation. And where they're going to look for that representation in this day and time, online. And there's a lot of representation that some is good and some is bad. Don't forget to subscribe to Hey UK so you never miss out on an episode. And some representation is bad. And unfortunately, the representation that is bad gets pushed further than the representation that's good. Easily. Easily. Because people eat negativity up more than they eat positivity. Yeah. It's eye-catching. It's much more eye-catching. And it's just more, I don't know if it's natural, but I know that they say that, oh, you can have lots of good positive comments, but you get that one negative comment and yeah. it sticks in your head. So it's easier to take in the negativity than it is to take in the positivity. So unfortunately, you can't you can't just rely on online mm -hmm. to be do, raising your kids. So you need to try at least be that representation. At least if you did your part, then it's your part done. Do you know what I mean? If the child wanna be wanna be boo boo the fool, then the child wanna be boo boo the fool. Like you can't That's control it. the child. The child is its own person and they have to do their own thing too. And they also have to go down their own path. Do you know what I mean? But as long as you instill good foundations in them that's that's your part done like obviously you're gonna always be for the there for your child and everything but you can't make your child do what your child don't want to do there's only so much you can do man yeah. when it comes to anybody in life and trying to control someone that has chosen no this is what i'm gonna do whether you like it or not mm -hmm. you're just gonna give yourself stress at the end of the day but tying in everything in regards to final takeaways with wash yourself that's <laughs> it hygiene wash yourself because we are too wash far yourself, into the internet. Wash your clothes. Wash your your towel. Wash it often. Wash everything because we're too far into the year, too far into technology for people not to know the basics mm -hmm, in this day and age. COVID but, happened. COVID happened, but we still have people coughing on the train. And I beg, I beg of you, <laughs> cover your mouth when you're on public. No, no, transport. because it actually gets me. I, I think if I see that ever again, I'm not going to be funny. I'm going to be that person now that's going to be like, could you not cover your mouth? Oh, I do that now. Because I I, that now. I, obviously now I work from home, so I have avoided that for quite a bit. Yeah, you're lucky. But I promise you now, if you are a person and you cough in public transport, I will be that enemy. And I, I don't give a fuck. I, you want me to be the bad guy? Or oh, I'll be the bad guy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Chung Lee, I'll be that bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? I will tell you about yourself. And I will tell you about yourself, your dirty, stinking, rascal self, coughing on a public chain and you're not covering your mouth? It's actually it's You deserve actually a crazy. booting. Not true, it's crazy. Because you're spreading your dirty diseases. You don't know if I have asthma. You don't know if I have any other illnesses. And that little cough, now if I catch it, that could send me to hospital. Yeah, you're always, man. Dirty. The vulnerable people were feeling it in that time. Yep. So that's the final takeaway, really. Mm -hmm. When it comes to hygiene, take your hygiene seriously. Do not wait for your towel to smell or look dirty before oh. you clean your towel. Clean your towel and have multiple towels. Don't just have one towel. Because the fact that we're talking in the fact that you don't have multiple towels is a bit scary. It's scary. Okay, you, you need to have multiple towels. You're telling me it, that, oh, you bring your own towel because you don't. It's, it's weird, but it's like that but guys before you go yeah you know we got the milestones we're trying to hit ten thousand followers on instagram because we are going to bring you so many different things in the new year Way that we're already in Way this underscore uk but before you go just a couple things you need to do make sure you like make sure you subscribe make sure you share make sure you hit that bell button so that you get notified every single time we post an episode and make sure you follow our pages as well listen listen we're trying to be more active on um i'm trying to be more active on instagram <laughs> i don't post on instagram as often but i do post on tiktok so if you're a tiktok baby beg you follow me on tiktok because i be out here posting all kinds of content vibes we're on vibes here do you know what i'm saying she posts on tiktok as well vibes we're all vibes here but we're trying to post on tiktok we're trying to post on instagram we create music we're very multifaceted beings and we're trying to create platforms for more fast multifaceted beings to grow so please make sure you follow share subscribe 
do all of that. Comment. Let us know how you feel because we're here to discuss, do you understand? And we want to hear any other topics that you want to discuss. But you have been listening or watching. Hey, sis. It's your girls. Bye. Oh, we've got to do a quick plug as well. <laughs> oh, you want to do a quick plug? Quick plug. On the 2nd of February, you can catch me hosting Connect Fest, which is, Wait, which is a live music showcase. It says Litty. See, I, see, I, didn't, even tell it. I didn't even tell her to do that. No, so no, you know it's, it's Litty. Legit. It's a live music showcase. It's happening at the Old Tiger's Head in Blackheath, mm-hmm. South East London. And if you do music in any type of facet within the music industry or, you know, coming near that, Come down there. There's networking, live yep. music showcase, open mic, prize giveaway. There's an after party and it's a vibe. And did I mention that I'm hosting? Listen, you're going to have a good time. I'm going to like, if you don't come, you're going to miss out so bad. You're going to be vexed because I promise you it's a vibe. It's a defo vibe. Uh, if you look down below in the subscription box, the link for the tickets on Shub.com should be there. And yeah. You'd want to be there. A lot mm-hmm. of networking, a lot of movers and shakers from managers, A and R's, film directors, radio pluggers, you name it, they're gonna be in the building. So Period. they will Period. be there. So yeah, like <laughs> you were saying, stay blessed. Like a queen and I like what I see and I wanna get more of that. I address any blow success. Lay down as you decompress. Come on and forget the stress. But the nine to five, cause he's trying to change his life. He can't help it but to show his bad side. So call me Jesse when he want that good ride. Follow my stride. You know you want a good time Pick uh-huh. any card, I know it won't decline never. You know how to please me, never tease me Keep me in Givenchy, laced in Gucci Quick, take the keys and drive to Chelsea uh-huh. He is Galini, uh-huh. order Linguini He uh-huh. ordered the Chateau, we got it to go Then flew to the Chateau, you already know Friends telling me they see the glow There's no way they know Well, I guess it shows, that's the seed you sold Oh, yes.